football show in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. It's something about the Blue Bloods and the fight songs that always get us going. It makes that 140 days seem so close. Right now, let's go to a former quarterback at USC. We're going to talk some quarterback. We're going to talk about Sark and really understand the offensive philosophy. John David Booty, welcome to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I hope all is well, man. Hey, Ryan. How are you, man? Thanks for having me. Man, absolutely. And and I don't know if that fight song, man, we love to hear, you know, the blue bloods of college football, the fight song. It just kind of gets us going as we get a little closer to the football season. Man, yeah, I, I love hearing that song. I don't know how uh, people in, in Alabama feel about it, but uh, I sure love to hear it. Well, listen, listen, and, and I think you'll find this. We respect, you know, like USC, Notre Dame, uh, when you talk about you know the, the the big fight songs, it just means college football. So the because we have to kind of go through the same dislike. You, you know what I mean? Like when you're on top, you kind of get a little, little little bit of hatred. Uh, so we kind of know what you guys go through, and you guys kind of know what we go through because everybody sort of picks at us when we're on top. Absolutely, man. John David, I, I certainly want to spend some time, but but I'm just kind of curious. I was thinking about this uh, with your brother. Did you ever have a chance to get to know Nick Saban during that recruiting process? I mean, do you remember any any stories of Nick Saban? Yeah, I I, I did. He was always around Evangel, uh, which was the high school that, that I attended, um, and I did get to know him a little bit. Obviously, Josh and Abram played for him at LSU uh, for only the the one season, though I believe after Donardo was done, uh, and I, and I did get to know him and Jimbo Fisher and and some of those guys quite a bit. But uh, really, i, I got to be honest that L- LSU is probably one of the only schools that, that didn't recruit me that hard. Um, I, I really I felt they, they knew you know deep down in their hearts that I, I probably wasn't going to go there given the uh, experience that my brothers had at LSU, which I know Josh will say was great. Um, Abram might, might say a little differently, but – um, I just I really wanted to be more in a pro style offense, which LSU really wasn't at that time. Um, so I, I I think they probably knew early on that that it wasn't likely that I would go there. John David, when you watch college football now from a quarterback perspective, do you like where we're going offensively in the game of college football? Do you dislike it? Are you neutral? Or do you understand it? Where where do you stand when you watch current college football in the direction offensively that we're going? Yeah, I guess I'm neutral on it. I mean, it, it, it is fun to watch a lot of points, uh, you know, these high-scoring offenses and whatnot. But I, I, I got to be honest and say I don't, I don't quite understand it. Uh, it. It seems like a lot of times these play callers are just going down their, their call sheet uh, and, and not even really calling based on the defenses uh, that they're seeing. So I, I, there's definitely times that I don't quite understand it, but it is fun to watch. We're talking to John David Booty right now and going to spend some time talking about Sark. And, you know, if I walked up to you and I said, what do you think Sark's offensive philosophy is? What, what, how would you describe maybe his mentality offensively? I, I think it's aggressive. I mean, that's, that's what they always preach, you know, is, is just keeping your foot on the gas and, and getting after it and uh, really not giving the, the defense a chance to breathe. And, and we're just going to keep coming at you every play with, with motions and shifts and down the field and zone runs and power runs. And uh, it's just that everything's in your face and let's go and let's do it. Let's do it quickly. So uh, I, I just think very, very aggressive is how I would define Sark. Well, let me ask you, what's it like to, to work with him? Because you were one of his quarterbacks and you talk about being an OC and a quarterback coach. What is it that maybe makes him? Because everybody talks about his brilliance on the offensive play calling, that responsibility. What makes him so great? Uh, well, I think he's played the position of quarterback. Um, you know, at, at BYU, he had great success under Norm Chow there, uh, who was also the offensive coordinator. Uh, you know, early on when I was at SC, uh, and, and he followed kind of uh, under his footsteps. But he he's just he's really played the position. I mean, the the two I would say probably best. Uh, you know, quarterback gurus, coaches I've played under were, were definitely Coach Sark and Coach Kubiak when I was with the Texans, and both of those guys played the position at a very high level and were very successful, and I think they just they understand it from a quarterback's, you know, point of view. Well, see, we're all looking for clues exactly where Nick Saban's going to take this quarterback. Uh, John David, I think we've at least come up with our first clue of the spring. Let me read through the offensive line here. Left tackle, 6'6", 310. Left guard, 6'7", 360. Center, 6'3", 315. Emil Ikior, right guard, 6'3", 338. Jedrick Wills, 6'5", 316. Does that give us any hints? 
that, that's some big boys right there. <laughs> How would you like to have that group in front of you? Man, I, well, I was, I was fortunate to have, have one of the best in the country, sure. too. So I I, uh, I know what that's like. But I, I think, too, with, with guys that big, and, and I'm not sure even exactly how, how tall Tua is, but my guess is you'll see him on, the, him, him on the move a little more this year maybe than you did last year. John David, Tua used a, a verbiage, and we, we tried to ask him a couple of weeks ago, what was the biggest difference between Mike Loxley and Sark? And I think we kind of depend on a quarterback to maybe help us understand this. He used the word full field progressions. Kind of help us understand that from a layman's term. Well, I, I think a lot, like we talked about uh, the college game and where it's going, I think you're seeing a lot of guys looking at, at just maybe certain areas of the field uh, and that dictates everything that they do is, hey, no matter what the coverage is, the fronts, doesn't matter. I'm, I'm working the left side on this play no matter what. Where with Sark and, and the real kind of West Coast, you're, it's the full field. Everything's happening right up to the, you know, the second the ball is snapped. So you're really looking at the entire field all the time until that, that coverage or the defense that they show at the very last second you know, really gets you to, to the side you're going to work where I think a lot of times now guys are just working a high-low to one side of the field regardless of what the defense does. So I think the full field is, is everything's open until maybe that, that last second, uh, and then that's determining you know, whether it's a, you know, middle of field open or middle of field closed, I'm working this side uh, or you know, the other. I think that's what he's referring to. John David, what do you see in Tua Tonga Valoa? His accuracy is amazing. Um, and, you know, it, especially the deep ball, it's such a, a low percentage throw. And, and the way he makes those look so easy and hits them right in stride and, and allows them to make a play after the catch is just, it's really remarkable. Now, Josh, when, when excuse me, I called you your brother because we do feature your brother quite often. But, John David, when, when you look at Tua, where would you like to see him take that next step as a quarterback? Man, that, that's really hard to say. Um I think maybe just the physical side of it. You know, I know he's had to deal with some injuries, um, you know, especially last year. I'm not sure what the the history is there, um, you know, throughout high school and earlier on in college. But I just think maybe that that weight room and that physical part is going to be, you know, key to him advancing to the next level and and staying healthy and, and being on the field to play. John David Booty right now with us from USC, a quarterback that that had a chance to play at a high level, and, and we're kind of picking his brain as we continue to progress and try to understand Sark. And But it, when you look at Sark, I remember us getting so excited when he first got a name here as the offensive coordinator, December the 15th, 2016. Uh, then the NFL opportunity came up, and he took to the NFL, had a chance to, to work with some big guys, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, had a very explosive season uh, this past year in Atlanta. Uh, but coming back, it, it's like that same excitement kind of gets us back e- excited when you look at Sark and his offensive philosophy. I mean, uh, with all the weapons at wide receivers, the running backs, I mean, there's a reason to be excited because we're used to kind of playing a little bit of conservative ball around here. Uh, mm-hmm. But it, but it's kind of di- – two has made us open up a little bit like, okay, hey, uh, that could be a fun part of the game as well. Yeah, no, I, I I think you all got you should be very excited to have Sark back and and now to get a spring in and and all of camp and everything. I know uh, he was there and then kind of got announced at the the end of the season going to the national championship game a few years ago. But I think for the players just to have time to be around him this spring and then again in in two a days come August um, is just is really something to be excited about. John David, do you still do anything with the ga- like the game of football? As far as do you, do you miss that side? I mean, how how long was it uh, that maybe you wanted to get back in? I mean, obviously the, your father, the legacy coach, and, and and your brothers involved. I mean, how far did you did it take you to get away from the game and just like where where you you just wanted to be back involved? And in, are you are are you still involved? Yeah, I mean to be honest, I'm, I'm really not. I'm I'm raising three young kids right now, and that takes uh, pretty much all of my time out you know outside of work. Um, but, but really I work with my, my nephew general, who's going to be a junior, um, out here at J Sarah high school, sure. um, in Southern California. So I, I really spend time with him. Uh, he was gone last year in Texas, so I didn't get to as much last year, but that's something I look forward to. And I, and I love the game and I, I love working with young kids. I don't do it as much as I would like. Um, but I've never really had the desire to, you know, go, go be a coach and, and work my way up the ranks. Um, as far as that goes, John David, 
what is the difference between maybe Kiffin's offensive philosophy and Sark's offensive philosophy? Because we know a lot about Kiffin. I mean, Kiffin came in and really changed a lot of the offensive play calling here in Tuscaloosa. It was a record-setting year, Heisman Trophy winner. I mean, we we kind of understand Kiffin. Is there a big difference between the two? I, I don't really think so. I mean, I think, uh, again, aggressive mentality and philosophy. Um, you know, Kiffin might have a, a few more trick plays he throws in from time to time than I would say, you know, Sark. But, but again, you know, it's it's really been almost a decade since I, I've played with, you know, under either one of them. So I'm sure they've all adjusted and adapted uh, and grown as well. But I, I think with, with both, you're getting, you know, kind of the, they come from the same bloodline almost. So you're getting a lot of the same guy. John David, when you see the SEC in the Pac-12, what's the biggest difference between the two leagues? Right now, I, I, I think the biggest difference um, is the, the, the guys up front, O-line, D-line. Um, you know, it, it, back when I was at SC, we, we kind of we had that uh, on, you know, the, on the O-line and D-line, where now I think you're seeing a lot of really good skill players uh, in, in the Pac-12 and as, as well as the SEC. Um, but I, I think it's the guys up front are, are the biggest difference you know, in the SEC compared to really most of the conferences. John David, and I know I'm not trying to get you to compliment another school in the Pac-12, but uh, from a distance, we always enjoy, admire what Chris Peterson is is doing in Washington with his offensive philosophy. Uh, former quarterback, what do you see in Chris Peterson that makes him so successful uh, there on the West Coast? Yeah, he he reminds me of Pete a, a little bit, not necessarily with his energy, but but everywhere he goes, he seems uh, to get everybody to buy into his system and and what he's what he's preaching and teaching. So I think that's that's something that's pretty remarkable that he's been able to do, uh, regardless where he is. That that everybody buys in and uh, you know it, it pays off for him. You know, it's it's such a small world when you talk about the relationships and you look at this little fraternity of college football and. You look at your ties back to your brother and Sark and, and Nick Saban. I mean, you, you almost wonder the small world that college football, it's like everybody's connected to somebody and, and in some way you can intertwine uh, the different people and the relationships in the game of college football. Yeah, it, it's amazing. And, you know, even at, when I was getting recruited by SC, it was, it was Coach O who was the one who recruited me. Uh, you know, at SC, and he was obviously covering Louisiana territory, but, and, and you know, now he's – He's obviously at LSU, and and I couldn't be happier for him. So I, I find myself, you know, rooting for the the Tigers on most Saturdays as well. So it it is a small world. But listen, we feature Coach O as often as we possibly can in Tuscaloosa. Believe it or not, we we do uh, have a lot of respect for Coach O. Uh, he, he's a guy that that literally you could text him. I don't know of any other coach in the SEC you could text him, and he's like he's like his own publicity guy. He's like, sure, yeah, yeah, I'll come on in Tuscaloosa. So he comes on and talks football with us, man. Coach O is a is a high energy guy, and and he's a guy that you'd want to sit on the back deck and have a glass of, uh, you know, sweet tea with, as we would say in the South. I mean, he would be a guy that you'd love just to sit around and pick his brain for a few minutes. Yeah, he, he's definitely a man's man, and uh, I, I would say probably out of out of all the coaches um, that I, that I played under, I I probably stayed in as close contact with him, uh, um, you know, probably more than any of them. Well, and and I think you see that with the relationship with his players because they play hard for him. I mean, LSU, look, look, I mean, all of us counted him out. I mean, we had him on the hottest seat in college football, and somehow he rallied the troops and got all those young men to buy into what he was preaching. And uh, those guys, you know, I mean, obviously energized and, and had a successful year. Yeah, he's he's a lot of fun to be around. And, you know, I think you, you saw that at SC a few years ago, too, after the shakeup, and he took over. They they rallied around him and, and put together a little run. So he's – he definitely, you know, gets the players to buy in. He's another one of those guys that just uh, you, you love being around him, and you know, you know what he's saying is the real deal, and he's he's out for your best interest, and the players love that. No doubt. Hey, John David, thank you again for spending a couple of minutes with our, us here in Tuscaloosa. We appreciate the conversation. Thank you again for being a part of the show. Man, thank you anytime.